Tomlos route and I was asked kindly by bus to um, uh, shortly uh, lay out uh, a program we have for entrepreneurs. Um, my company Hongos Route will loosely translate into trade routes, organizes trade missions for uh, entrepreneurs in IT and in media. And uh, the first upcoming trade mission um, coincides very much with the day and the topic of today. Um, uh, the coming trade mission is to Silicon Valley and our theme for that trade mission is open. Um, what do we mean by open? Um, a lot of entrepreneurs, as you may or may not know, um, struggle with the concept of open. Because of the, in the end of the day, uh, there has to be some revenues and some profit. Um, you see in Holland that a lot of uh, uh, the open concepts, uh, especially in businesses, um, are very uh, pushed or uh, have launching customers like governments or uh, uh, non um, uh, governments or semi-government, right? So organizations like uh, maybe um, municipalities or uh, schools knowledge institutes. And you see that uh, that's a little bit different in the US and we hope to mirror the perspective in the US with uh, um, the situation in Holland and maybe get some inspiration, get some good business cases up and running here as well, uh, help each other with networking, finding new partners, finding inspiration. And um, so the first week of November, we'll go to Silicon Valley. It's a, a, a project backed by the government, by the Dutch government. So actually, it's also available for smaller companies um, uh, because um, NLEVD International, our former um, organization that promotes export uh, for the Dutch Economic Affairs Department, uh, subsidizes this um, trade mission. I was wondering in this uh, eclectic circumstance, who is actually an entrepreneur here? Yes? Um, if, if I ask you what are the most difficult parts for you as an entrepreneur, what are the challenges? Can I ask you that? Probably atypical because uh, I started very long term projects around a decade ago, eight, eight years ago. And, and my challenge is uh, to get them up to a, a usable level. It's taken a very long time, but that was pre calculated because I knew that they were very ambitious projects. Okay. Um, are there projects? similar to your project that you might be able to share knowledge, learn from? Are you yes, already doing that? Yes, but there are also competitors, of course. Ah, so there you where your barriers are, yeah. right? What am I going to tell the world and what do I keep for myself to yeah. uh, go a, a step further? Well, we're always busy with, uh, with promotion. So uh, once the systems get up to uh, a usable level, the Motion should already have been there for yep. at least one or, or a few years before people will buy probably. That's actually one thing because I do a lot of trade missions uh, to the US. That's the big difference between I would say North, uh, uh, Northern Europe and uh, um, the States, mm -hmm. even Canada. Uh, we, we're very product development focused. We really want to have our products done and then we go to market, and then we start marketing. In, in Europe, you mean? Yeah. And in the States, it's uh, way more like, if, if you have the framework and you have the concept, you quicker go to do it. launch it publicly. Yeah. First of all, to get the feedback from your maybe clients, your potential clients. And second of all, uh, it's easier to get funding if you already start to have a little bit of traction. And third of all, they think like, yeah, but we're running a business. We're not like product developers, we're business people. So if we if we start in an earlier stage with our marketing and finding uh, clients, with the revenue, you can also re 
the engineer or uh, tweak your product. So that's a big difference we notice a lot. Everything is uh, Google better. Yeah, but everything always stays in better. Yeah. And that's logical, of course, because when is your product finished? Well, if you really love your product, it will never be finished. Exactly. Never. So where do you start going public with it? <coughs> Anyone else? Other entrepreneurs? You? Uh, my company is a big, bit different because I work for a company or I own, well, I am building up a company here in the Netherlands that is part of a bigger company that also has offices in uh, San, Mateo, uh, San Mateo in California okay. uh, and in Germany. Okay. Um, and what we do see here is that uh, companies would like to adopt open source software. Uh, also, uh, government organizations want to adopt open source software, but there is really um, people don't treat it as regular software. And? As regular software, as a yeah. or commercial yeah. software, I should say. Um, and in the States, they do. Uh, in the States, people get software, and then they, they think, okay, I got the software, and now I need the support contract, or whatever. And uh, in the Netherlands, it's much more, uh, people like to use free software. For instance, I have one of our clients now, is a very big ISP. And uh, they use our software in a very in a way that is very critical to them. Uh, but they never bothered to uh, get a support contract or whatever. And if something was wrong, they did as expect the, the open source project to solve their issues quickly, right? But it doesn't. So they they used it, uh, expecting commercial services from a community. Uh, but we had a company in place that provides the commercial services, but they didn't, they think, uh, they thought it was too expensive, or I don't know what exactly, yeah. but so only after a long time we convinced them that they needed the commercial services as well, right? And I guess I feel that in the States the attitude towards open source software is different in a way that people treat it as open source software. So you're free to use it if you don't want support or anything, right? And if you use it and you you need the commercial services, you don't you, you just take the contract and you don't complain that you need to pay money for a product. Right? So uh, what you're saying is that um, in Holland, people think they get a package deal if they go for open source uh, software because they do not understand that there are separate packages. And in the states, maybe very much initiated by their uh, focus on liabilities themselves as well. Everybody is very focused on liabilities. So yeah. if you um, if you adopt open source software in the state, you check your contracts, you see where the, your liability lies, starts and ends. And who can you approach when something goes wrong? And uh, uh, probably that's why they are um, more willing and more open and more understandable that you have to have like a, a, a service level agreement with yeah. someone. Yeah. Or so either you employ uh, a, a room full of hackers yourselves or right. you just uh, hire a company that does that for you or something like yes. that. Yes. And but they're at least much more receptive to the idea that, that if it's open source that you either need to contribute in some form of at least supporting yourself or you have to hire somebody to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, anyone else? Go ahead, what do you do? Yeah, as a young company, uh, we are doing operate, operating, operating systems. So I will give a talk later today. And the biggest problem of a young company is to find customers and to uh, get them to trust you as a company, especially if you are small. And uh, in our experience, uh, open source had, had helped us a lot in this regard. Because we have an open source project uh, that we drive and we, uh, we make uh, regular releases and this uh, uh, makes our pro project and also our company um, visible okay. and so um, pot potential customers can see what we, are what we are capable of doing and can get engaged with us. So, uh, and do you own sell your services yourself or do you have partner networking that sells things as well for you? Like selling you with 
something they can offer? Because that's a smart move as well, right? If you're a small company in this world, you can also find partners. Uh, there, I think, a lot of IT companies are very much into closed software or, or licensing software or whatever still that missing out contracts now because there's actually a demand for open. So they liaise sometimes with smaller companies, so you would be the subcontractor for that particular part. You have to think about that. It's a, a, a smart way to get some traction into the market. Do you do that, Freddy? So, <coughs> so for the business part of our company, we are doing mostly uh, uh, contracting work or uh, services. Okay. So we are not uh, uh, getting any income from our product yet. But we hope that our open source uh, software will uh, be useful for commercial deployment mm -hmm. and then uh, people will hopefully demand services around those products yep. and potentially uh, also um, 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 engage us with uh, service level agreements or um, also license the software in special conditions. Okay. So that's yep. so a, a premium model. Yes, yes. If, if for instance, if a, uh, if a customer is not is not ready to accept the open source license that we normally use because of a special uh, <coughs> um, use cases, then uh, he might get in contact with us to uh, obtain a, a license that fits better. Okay. Okay. Well, I think my time is nearly up. So um, I put some one pagers. I will put them. Um, bus, where can I put them best? The one pagers on the project outside? On the desk? Yeah, yeah, on the table. I will put them on the table. If you're interested in joining or you know a company that is interested in joining, you can still register until the 1st of October. The trip is the first week of November. We start off with the pitch training in Holland before we go. I have to say it's really necessary to get your pitch up and running if you go to the States. They're brilliant present presenters and we are not. Are German companies also available? I'm afraid you have to have a Dutch Chamber of Commerce registration. It's a really, uh, uh, because it's a subsidized uh, uh, project from the Dutch government. Um, sometimes we have commercial um, projects going. So uh, if you want to, in the future, come along, take along with another um, trip we're doing, just let me know. I'll keep you in the loop for the specific um, themes you're interested in. My email address, my telephone number, everything is on the one page here. I'll put it outside. And if you want to join uh, and you have a company based in Holland, you're very welcome to. Yeah. I will put a link to the exact contact details if it, would, if it is necessary. Yeah, that would be great. Page. That would be great. So yeah. uh, we have a project website up. It's www.hollandisopen.com. So if you want to check what we're doing or what we're going to do, because the pre project websites are always up and running after the project is done as well, and we put some extra video content and everything on it. So thank you for your time. .com, did you say? Yes.